Ahí arriba está colgado. Hi, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hi, how are you today? Fine. <coughs> it's nice to hear that. We are almost done, almost complete with the module. Have you finished the platform? Yes, teacher. Awesome. That's nice to hear that. So um, today we're going to continue with yesterday's topic, which is the simple past of the verb be. We will continue practicing that, uh, starting with the questions. That's what we're going to do today. Let me um, share my screen so that we can watch the first video for today's class. Um, so that's questions with the past of B. And also we're going to make a kind of review of the sentences with the past of B to make this complete. Let me share sound. Here we go. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn how to ask and answer questions with the past of B. Additionally, you'll also learn how to express years. Let's get started by analyzing the questions that you see on this chart. Questions with the past of B. Were you born in the U.S.? Yes, I was. No, I wasn't. Was your brother born in 1984? Yes, he was. No, he wasn't. Were your parents born in Incheon? Yes, they were. No, they weren't. Where were you born? I was born in Korea. When was he born? He was born in 1985. What city were they born in? They were born in Seoul. Years. 1906. 1917, 1999, 2001. To form questions with the past of B, we can follow this formula. WH word plus was or where plus subject plus complement. Let me point out that whenever we make yes or no questions, there won't be a WH word. Let's analyze a couple of examples. Were you born in the US? In this case, this is a yes or no question, so we don't add a WH word. The first thing we do is add the verb to be in the past, where. Next, we need to include the subject, you. Finally, we need to add the complement and a question mark at the end born in the US. To answer this type of question, we can answer positively by saying, yes, I was, or negatively by saying, no, I wasn't. Let's analyze one last example. Where were you born? In this case, this is a WH question, so we need to add a WH word. The first thing we need to do is to add a WH word. Next, we need to include the verb to be in the past, where. After that, we need to add the subject, you. Finally, we need to add a complement and a question mark, born. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to practice making questions about place of origin and birthdays, similar to the examples on the chart. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forum. Was this um, easy or you find it confusing, difficult? What you think? Any comments? No comments? Okay, now let's review. Uh, do you remember how to form affirmative statements with the past of B? What was the formula? 
Now remember. So yet. Uh huh. Subject after the subject. Was where? Uh huh. Was a where? After that. Complement. Okay. That was the structure to make affirmative statements using the past of B. For example, if I say uh, my mother, um, my mother is the subject. So am I going to use was or were? Was, was. or were? Okay. Was. okay, my mother was a dressmaker. Okay, that's an affirmative statement. My mother was a dressmaker. Now, uh, what is the structure to make a negative statement? If I want to make a negative statement, what is the structure? is basically the Was same. Or not. Uh -huh. That's the only difference. I need to add not after was or were, and I can make it contracted, right? Uh, for example, if I want to say that um, my mother, um, decir que ella no era una enfermera, right? My mother was not or wasn't, if we want to make it contracted, my mother wasn't a nurse, okay? Now, if I want to make a, a just no question, what is the structure? Lo acabamos de ver. What Red is double, 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 double. No, for a yes, no. Para una yes, no question, se empieza con was a word. Oh. Uh -huh. Y luego, pues, el subject. And then uh, we may have a complement. Was, word, subject, complement, and Finally, we need to place the question mark. Okay, what is the question mark? Okay, now, um, if I want to ask, uh, era, um, um, era tu papa un mecánico? How, how can I make a question? a mechanic your father was or was your father a mechanic uh -huh. or your father mm -hmm. and finally the question was your father a mechanic now let's make another example if i want to ask you as as the was as we start in class a year Si yo le pregunto a usted si estuvo tarde para la clase ayer. Was you. Uh, con you? you usamos where. Were you were. late uh -huh. at the class in the night? Oh, for class. Si llegó tarde la clase. Were you late for class yesterday? Okay, that's the question. Were you late for class yesterday? Y esas, como ya su nombre lo dice, se pueden, te, pueden tener una respuesta corta, un simple sí o no. ¿Cuál sería la estructura si yo quiero decir sí, llegué tarde? Yes, simplemente I yes, I was. Y si no... No, contesto no. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't. Okay. Estoy contestando con I porque es como si me preguntaron a mí, ¿verdad? Si me preguntan, ¿estuviste tarde en clase ayer? 
Entonces yo digo, ah, yes, I was, o no, I wasn't. Ok, it's like, a, así sería como un, un rol de conversación. Ahora, si yo quiero hacer una WH question, una WH question no la puedo contestar con sí o con no. La estructura es la misma, solamente que al principio yo tengo que poner una WH word. Ok. Usando esta misma pregunta, were you late for class yesterday? Esa era la yes no question, preguntándole, llegaste tarde ¿no? o estuviste tarde para la clase ayer. Ahora yo quiero saber la razón. ¿Cuál es la WH word para preguntar la razón, el por qué? Why. 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 Entonces solo agrego why aquí. Why were you late for class yesterday? Okay. ¿Por qué? Porque ya hace clase tarde ayer. Why were you late to class yesterday? Estas ya no se pueden contestar con un sí o no. Imagínense que le dicen, ¿por qué llegaste tarde? ¿Sí? <ríe> no, no se puede. Tengo que dar la razón. Por eso uh, se llaman information questions. Entonces podría decir, um, because... Because um, I was in another class. Oh, because I was in another class. Ajá. Uh -huh. Because I was in the cafeteria and I didn't realize it was time for the class. Because I was in the traffic, etc. Okay. So that is what we're going to be practicing. We're going to start with just no questions. Vamos a empezar para no hacer todo de una vez. Porque nos podemos... Eh, solo sería frustrante hacer todo de una vez. Vamos a ir... Eh, de a poco, o sea, ahorita vimos las yes no questions como ven acá um, were you in class yesterday? es como si le preguntan a ti, ¿estuviste en clase ayer? entonces, si alguien me pregunta a mí, respondo ah, sí, yes I was o no, I wasn't now, another example was your first teacher American? yes she was or no, she wasn't Then the last example, were your parents born in the U.S.? No, they weren't. Uh, yes, they were. Oh, no, they weren't. Esta es la única pregunta que es como que no se relaciona con, con el, el uh, cero estar, sino que pues esas es de las cosas que no podemos traducir y solo es como que la edad, ¿verdad? Para preguntar la edad es con el verbi, para preguntar dónde nació también con el verbi, and that's it. Now, let's analyze this picture. And based on this picture, we're going to work in groups answering the questions that we have here. First question, uh, ah, and we got Adam, Mrs. Carter, Cindy, and Mark. Okay. So based on the picture and the people that we have here, we're going to ask and answer these questions. First one, was Adam time for class yesterday? Was it English class? Was it a sunny day? Was it 10 o'clock? Was Mrs. Carty very angry? Were Cindy and Mark late to class? Were they at the board? Were the windows open? So we're going to check here and answer these questions. We are going to discuss the answers in groups and you have this picture in the presentation that I sent yesterday. So I'm going to create the breakout rooms for you to be able to answer those questions.
lo encontró Kenny, la, la presentación. Sí, solo la estoy poniendo. Ah, ok. De acuerdo. Listo, pueden, la miran. Sí, sí, sí. Ok. Es, esta es, exactamente. Let's go. Let's go. Ok. Um, la primera sería negativo, ¿verdad? Porque pregunta como que si Adam llegó a tiempo a la clase de ayer. Was yes. Adam on time for class yesterday? Sí. ¿Cómo vamos a No. No, he, he wasn't. wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Okay. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Sería no, he short, wasn't. short, short. Short question. Cortas. Ok. Yes. Okay. The answer to is what's it English class? Was no, it was igual forma sería, sería no no it it wasn't no it wasn't no it was uh -huh. negativo okay. Let's the tree is what is sunny day? I don't know. Siempre negativo. <laughs> no, I don't know. No, it was what? No, it was. Okay. Um, it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ten, ten ah. o'clock. Ah, no, sorry. Don't worry. Uh, what's it? Ten o'clock. No. no. Sería negativo. No, no, porque son las diecinco. No, no, it's what's what in. It's um, ten five. Teacher. Yes. In the answer uh, for question four, uh, uh, is no, it. No, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It ten five. It was uh huh. It was ten oh five. Ah okay. It it was okay. Yes. I the two are in simple past. Mm, and okay. the, the two question number two. Uh, no, in the 
the in answer. Uh, let's, the answer is it was two options. In which one? Four. Was it ten? You can reply. No, it wasn't. Porque no eran las diez, eran ya las diez pasadas. Entonces, se, puede, se puede hacer la respuesta corta y se puede aclarar qué hora es. Claro, puede dar más detalles. So you can say no, it wasn't. It was 10.05. Ok. Mm -hmm. Ok. Or five. Was Mr. Carl very hungry? Yo creo que es. Yes. <laughs> yes, she is. She yes. was very angry. <laughs> she was. She were. Yes. She were. No, with she, cuando es ella, se usa was. Entonces, um. Um, en este caso, was Mrs. Carter very angry? Yes, she was. Okay. Okay. The six, the number six. Was, was Cindy and Mark late to class? Cindy and no, Mark. No. No, they. No. They were. No, uh huh. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. Okay. The number seven. Were they at the board? Board, ¿qué, qué significa board? Is that Ah, okay. ¿Cómo sería esa pregunta, yeah. perdón? Were they at the board? En español, perdón. Yo creo que es pizarra. Paz, paz continua. Y es porque fueron. Dice, fueron fueron eh, Cindy y Mark en la tarde a recibir clases. Yes. And we finished that a question. Like, what more? What more? ¿Qué más? Eh, ya terminamos. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. La seis no sería they, they were and Mark. No. Uh -huh. eh, where, where, eh, where? where se usa solo para plural es you incluido yo, uh -huh. was para single uh -huh. ah, okay, okay. y está en en, en cuestión no, pero en tay en tay sí se maneja water en sí. qué en tay day day ajá uh -huh. so for yes. the number six were Cindy and Mark late to class what is the answer no, they weren't. No. Mm. No, they weren't. Uh huh. They were. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you can check the answers then. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Está bien. Okay. Bueno, terminamos. Finish. Finish. Thank you, guys. See Bye. You. Thank you. Hi. Hi, teacher. How was your practice? Was it easy? It was very easy because in the other hand, we create other, other questions, teacher. Such as, for example? For example, in our group, we create Adam, for example, was Adam, where in the classroom? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Very nice that you did uh, the extra mile. That's awesome. That's the purpose um, that you give the extra mile and that's going to help you a lot. Okay, so let's check the answers. Let's start with Bridget. Was Adam on time for class yesterday? No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. And you can give more details. Y también si estuvieron dando más detalles es muy bueno para practicar. So you may, uh, tal vez dijeron, no, he wasn't. He was late. Okay. Very good, Bridget. Can you ask the question number two to someone else, please? Was it English class? To whom? To Mario, Oscar? No, Mario. it wasn't. Uh-huh, no, it wasn't. What was that class, Mario? Is might. Uh, class. It was or geometry class. Uh -huh. it, it was, was... geometry class. Mm -hmm. Or math class. Very good. Um, can you continue with somebody else, Mario? Uh, was a was it a sunny day? To whom? To whom is the question? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. ¿Cómo estuvo el día entonces? Raining. raining. It was a it raining. Was a rain. It was raining. Uh -huh. It was a say. rainy day. It was a rainy day. Very good. Um, let's continue. Uh, volunteer for number four. Was it 10? No, it no, was. It was. No, it wasn't. What time was it? It, it was 10.05. 10 10.05. Very good. It was 10.05. Good. A volunteer for number five. Was Mrs. Carter very angry? Yes. Yes, she was. Excellent. Yes, she was. Number six, were Cindy and Mark late to class? No, they weren't. Okay. No, they weren't. They were on time. Uh, were they at the board?
were they at the board? No, they weren't. No, they weren't. Okay, and the last one, were the windows open? No, they weren't. That is correct. No, they weren't. A veces se confunden porque dice, pero es una cosa, pero como está en plural, contestamos con they. No, they weren't. And that's it. Next thing that we need to practice is the negative contractions. Let's watch the video when this topic is explained and then we're going to get back to this um, uh, in order to practice pronunciation. Okay, I think I didn't share it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi everyone, in this class you learn to sound natural when expressing contractions. Let's get started by analyzing the contractions on this chart. Aren't, weren't, don't, can't. Two syllables. Isn't, wasn't, doesn't, didn't. They didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry. I don't like coffee, and she doesn't like tea. These aren't their swimsuits. They can't swim. He wasn't here yesterday, and he isn't here today. A quick tip to follow when expressing contractions is to extend the N. For example, I can't. They weren't. Now it's your turn to practice. I would like for you to listen and repeat the contractions until you feel comfortable pronouncing them. Well, this is um, the content of what you already uh, saw on the platform. We have the negative contractions and uh, we have one syllable and two syllables. As I've told you before, it depends on how many sounds you can count or you can hear. For example, in the one here, you have aren't. It's one just, it's just one sound, aren't weren't, don't, can't. And then with the two syllables, you hear two sound, isn't, doesn't, wasn't, didn't. So they are two syllables. And uh, one of the advice that we uh, listen there is to make the N sound. Para que la contracción sea pronunciada correctamente, tenemos que um, pronunciar la N que está en esto como son negative contractions tenemos que uh, hacer un poquito enfática la N ahí al, al pronunciarla les voy a poner para que practiquen el, el audio de, de las negative contractions se les voy a poner dos veces voy a ir pausando para que ustedes puedan repetir en casa Page 102, Exercise 4, Pronunciation, Negative Contractions, Part A, Listen and Practice. One syllable, aren't, weren't, don't. Can't. Two syllables. 
isn't. Wasn't. Doesn't. Didn't. Page 102, Exercise 4, Pronunciation. Negative Contractions. Part A. Listen and Practice. One Syllable. Aren't. Weren't. Don't. Can't. Two syllables. Isn't. Wasn't. Doesn't. Didn't. Now we are going to listen to part B where these contractions are used in sentences. You can also repeat at home. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to practice this twice. Page 102, exercise four, part B. Listen and practice. He didn't eat dinner because he wasn't hungry. I don't like coffee and she doesn't like tea. This isn't my swimsuit. I can't swim. They weren't here yesterday and they aren't here today. Page 102, Exercise 4, Part B. Listen and practice. He didn't eat dinner because he wasn't hungry. I don't like coffee and she doesn't like tea. This isn't my swimsuit. I can't swim. They weren't here yesterday, and they aren't here today. Muy bien, se me había quedado pegado el micrófono. Now, uh, la idea de esto es que ustedes practiquen, repitan y repitan hasta que se sientan cómodos con, el, con la pronunciación. Recuerden que pues tienen los videos como um, material adicional de las videoconferencias si quieren chequear por ahí el audio o si no también está la plataforma. Ahorita tienen... Eh, 24-7 para usarla y la idea es pues que practiquen lo más que se pueda y aprovechen. Uh, next topic is um, the WH questions and also we have a conversation to practice there. Uh, before moving on, I would like to know if there is any question before we continue. No questions? No. Okay, so we will continue then. Let's see. Okay. 
Hi everyone, in this class you'll learn to ask and answer WH questions with did, was, and where. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, Where Did You Grow Up? Let's listen and practice. So Chuck, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. I was born there too. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 1990. I went to college here. Oh, what was your major? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. That's interesting. So why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money. And I love it. Look, what do you think? Well, uh... Now, let's analyze how to form questions with did, was, and where. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. When did you come to Los Angeles? I came to Los Angeles in 1990. Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money. How old were you in 1990? I was 18. What was your major in college? It was drama. How was college? It was great. I would like to point out that the key to understanding this topic is to not get confused with the following question. When do I use did and when do I use was or where? You must remember the following. You will use was or where whenever you need to ask something related to the verb be. And you will use did for all the rest of the verbs in English. Now, let's analyze the questions and answers. We've already covered both of these topics. What we're doing now is presenting them together, hoping that it's not confusing or difficult. So, let's start with questions with did. When forming questions in the past tense with any verb that is not the verb to be, we can follow this formula. WH word plus did plus subject plus verb in the present plus complement. This is the case of our first three questions. Where did you grow up? When did you come to Los Angeles? Why did you become a hairstylist? First, we're going to add a WH word where. Then we will include the auxiliary verb to form the question in the past, did. After that we need to add the subject, you. Next we include the verb in the present tense, grow up. Finally we can add a complement. In this case there is no complement. Towards the right hand side of this chart, you can see how these questions are answered. If you notice, the verbs change to the past tense now because we're no longer adding an auxiliary verb. Let's move on to asking questions in the past tense with was or where. We will use this structure whenever we want to ask something using the verb to be. We can't say the following. Did you were a good student? This is incorrect. To form questions in the past using was or where, we can follow this formula. WH word plus was or where plus a subject plus a complement. Let's break down an example from the chart. What was your major in college? First we need to add the WH word, what? Then we need to add was or where. After that, we include the subject, your major. Finally, we need to add a complement and a question mark at the end. In college. Now it's your turn to practice making WH questions with did, was, and where. Practice making similar questions such as the ones on this chart. But now focus on asking them about yourself, 
or your family. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, what do you think? Is it easy topic or is it difficult? No comments? I think that we need to practice no more. Yes, it is a practice as, as you heard in the video. Uh, it might be confusing when we put this together because remember that a few days ago we were studying the simple past with uh, regular irregular verbs and we used the auxiliary now we are with the simple past with the verb be where we don't have to use the auxiliary did anymore and uh, the the key is that we cannot combine or put those two things together because they are like the same <laughs> but different so whenever you want to express something that it doesn't have anything to do with a b you can use the auxiliary did for the rest of a verb that are not be was or were, you may use the auxiliary did but if you are expressing something related to the verb be in the past was or were, we don't use the auxiliary did or other verb because it's not necessary. The verb it was or were, and it doesn't need an auxiliary. It's like an independent part of, of the tense, right? So it doesn't depend of any auxiliary. So um, on the contrary, the other verbs, they do need the auxiliary when we are making questions and when we are making negative statements. And that's the, the main idea. And keeping that in mind, it's gonna be easier for us. But yes, it do requires a lot of practice. And we will practice more next week. So now we're just going to practice the conversation. Eh, vamos a practicar ahorita solamente la conversación porque pues no, no vamos a correr con este tema, aún tenemos tiempo. La próxima semana todavía nos quedan dos clases, lunes y martes. Y ahí vamos a practicar un poco más ya combinando las dos partes del pasado simple. Pasado simple con verbo be y con los demás verbos. So vamos a ir practicando más eh, para afianzar este topic, porque como bien lo oyeron en la plataforma, puede ser un poco confuso y nos podemos trabajar un poquito, tal vez al principio, pero con la práctica, pues eso se quita. So, the conversation, we have it and there. Solo el dibujito es diferente. Miren, la dejo pelona, pobrecita. Qué raro, siempre pasan las peluquerías esto. Okay, so we got the conversation is exactly the same, the, uh, the same one, but we're going to listen and I'm going to give you a chance to repeat at home. Page 102, exercise five, conversation. I grew up in Texas. Listen and practice. So, Chuck, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. Were you born there? Yeah, I was born in Dallas. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 2000. How old were you then? I was 18. I went to college here. 
Oh, what was your major? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. Really? Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money. And I love it. So, what do you think? Well, uh... Page 102, Exercise 5, Conversation I grew up in Texas. Listen and practice. So, Chuck, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. Were you born there? Yeah, I was born in Dallas. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 2000. How old were you then? I was 18. I went to college here. Oh, what was your major? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. Really? Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money. And I love it. So, what do you think? Well, uh... Questions about the conversation that you just heard? No questions? Okay. No, teacher, thank you. Let's practice this conversation a couple of times with your classmates. I'm going to create the breakout rooms. Let's see.
Well, I see I've participated back again and the uh, time is over for us for this week. Thank you for being joining the classes and uh, I hope that you have a very good weekend and see you on Monday. Remember that tomorrow no classes, you have the day off. In case that you haven't finished the platform, please do it. And if you need assistance, don't hesitate on reaching us. We're there to help you and see you. Take care. See you, take care. Good night. Good night. Good night.